Good morning. Praise God. This is Prophet Tina, and welcome to Fasted Blessings. If you're on with me on Wednesday, you know that we are preparing for a month of October fast. And the fast is for a personal fast. And I know that there are a lot of people in October that are fasting and praying for our government and for the coming election, and that is all good, all absolutely good. However, God is leading me to lead a fast for you, praise God, that is a personal fast to get you prepared, to get you pre prepared for what he is doing next and what's coming next uh, on the earth. So let us pray before we begin this morning. And God bless all of you who have joined us. You've joined us on the call. You have the line, the call line up there. If you want to participate, uh, the call line is, let's see, it's 712. 432-1500, and the code is 617481. So praise God. Join us this morning. You're more than welcome uh, to be a part of what we're doing uh, for the Lord in the month of October. I am so excited because, you know, God is bringing his glory to earth like never before. The hand of the Lord is upon the earth like never before. And I'm excited to be alive at this time to be able to partake of the glory of God uh, that he's manifesting. It is just a wonderful time, a great time, a great and wonderful time to be alive because God is moving. He's moving like never before, whereof I'm glad. And I know when you hear about some of the things that God is doing and what's going on, you're going to be glad as well. Praise God. So I want to I want to share my joy with you. I want to share my gladness with you because I have it on good authority that God wants to truly bless you in this season. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. And let's give him the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. My heart doth magnify the Lord this morning for great things he hath done. Whereof, whereof I am glad. For he has done and is continuing to do marvelous, marvelous, marvelous things. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Won't you worship him with me this morning? Won't you give God the glory? Oh, hallelujah. The worship and the praise where God is putting his signature, hallelujah, his stamp of approval in the praise of all the saints. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We got a few people that have joined us on uh, Facebook already. We're Facebook Live and we have the live call line if you want to join in. Let's give God some glory this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise his holy name for he is worthy. Oh, hallelujah. You look at me and you say, well, what is she laughing about? What is she so happy about? Praise God. I'm so happy and I am so glad because I know in whom I believe. I know that my Lord is God. Hallelujah. And his personality and his character who I mimic is a character and a personality of joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am so glad that I woke up in the land of the living this morning. And that wasn't by anything that I did. It's because God woke me up this morning. He said his mercies are fresh every morning. And that's the first mercy. Waking up to his glory. Waking up to his presence. Hallelujah. After a wonderful, peaceful sleep to rejuvenate my mind and rejuvenate my body and rejuvenate my spirit. Thank you, God, for sleep. But I also thank you for waking me up. Hallelujah. And I thank him for waking you up this morning so that you could join us. Hallelujah. In our fasted blessings talk. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to be talking about the glory and I'm going to be bringing out some scriptures. Praise God. And we're going to be talking about fasting. Bless the Lord, I'm even going to give you some ideas on how to stock your pantry, you know, for the coming month, for the fast that we're going to be on. We're going to be on a modified Daniel's fast, hallelujah, and God has given me some ideas about how to do that. It's going to be four weeks that we're going to be fasting, kind of like four and a half weeks. The, the last week has two days in it. And so the first week we are going to um, not have breakfast. We're going to miss one meal a day, okay, and, and, and not doing breakfast. Okay, not eating breakfast. We are going to pray for breakfast. That's what we're going to do. 
The second week is going to, we're going to do two meals. We're going to pray breakfast and we're going to pray lunch. And we're just going to have one meal uh, a day. Okay, and that's for the second week. And then in the third week, we're going to go back to breakfast, praying, fasting for breakfast, and then eating two meals. And then on the last week or the fourth week, praise God, we're going to go back to one um, meal a day and fast, and fasting and praying two meals a day. And then on the last two days of the month, in the last week, we're going to uh, go back to the two. Well, we will fast and pray one uh, meal and then we um, will eat two meals, praise God, ending the fast on the last day of October, which is October 31st, which I believe ends on a Tuesday this year. So we want to be prepared for the coming glory. Oh, hallelujah. The glory is just so rich, so powerful, and so anointed. And the glory of God is rising. The glory of God is rising in us. The glory of God is rising upon us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go to the phone right now before we start our prayer. And I'm going to find out who has joined us so far, who wants to let us know that they've joined us on the phone line. Anybody with us yet this morning? Praise God. Oh, Trifine. Good morning. That's Trifine. All the way from yeah. North Carolina. Rocky. Is it Rocky Mount? Rocky Point, North Carolina. Amen. Oh, High Point. Is it High Point, North Carolina? Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us, Trifine. Uh, bless the Lord. We are in a wonderful time, just a wonderful time to be alive and a wonderful time uh, in God for all the things that he's doing. Praise God. So we're going to start off with prayer this morning. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day, and we give glory and honor to you for this day. Hallelujah. For truly it is the day that you've made, and you've made this day, hallelujah, for us to, uh, to be glad in. Praise God, to be happy in, to rejoice in. And so I rejoice in you. I rejoice in your presence. And I hope everyone out there is rejoicing with me. And I'm asking you, Father, to send forth an anointing of joy. Send forth an anointing of rejoicing. Joy is only with you. You are a joy, Father. You are our joy. You are our strength. Scripture says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so I'm praying for an anointing of joy today. An anointing of joy to come forth and to manifest, hallelujah, among your people. And let them be happy in this time. And it's called fast, this sanctified fast. We're sanctifying a fast unto you, Lord, to move out everything on the inside of us that would hinder you uh, from moving more of your glory in us, Father. So we yield ourselves to you. We yield our bodies to you. We yield our minds to you. We yield our hearts to you, Father, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Take us, Father and use us for your glory. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Use us for your glory, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you know that God is a God of glory. Hallelujah. And Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17, he said, Father, the glory that you've given me, I've given it to them, that they might be one as you and I are one. Praise God. And so the Son of God, before he left this earth, he transferred his glory to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we want to understand all of what that means. We want to understand what it exactly means that Jesus said the glory, you know, that you've given to me, I've given to them. We want to explore that in its depth. We want to know that we know that we know who we are in Christ and in God in this season. And we want to understand the fullness, hallelujah, that he has for us at this time. We want to operate in all that he has. Praise God. We don't want to miss anything. We don't want to leave any stone unturned. If Jesus said it, if God said it, and if the promises in the word, we want those promises to be manifested unto us individually because the scripture says the promises of God are yea and amen they are yea and amen that means that they are yes and truly so hallelujah and so we find as we live our lives and we read the scriptures we see that there were things that Jesus did we see that there are glory and manifestations of miracles and salvations that were are in the scriptures 
got manifested through Jesus, and those things aren't manifesting <clears throat> in our lives yet. We find that there are promises in the scriptures that may not have actually manifested in our lives yet. And so we want all that this dispensation has given us. We want everything that God has called us to in his word, and we want it today. God is a today blesser. He is a now, a right now uh, blesser. And so we want to do everything that we can do to set ourselves up for the power and the glory of God to operate in our lives according to what his word says. So the word is uh, established forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. So we know the word of God is eternal. We know that God is an eternal God. His word is eternal. His word is powerful, okay? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we have his word. It is him, and he's made promises in that word. Hallelujah. He's given us instructions in that word on how to live and how to be a, a God people in this earth, Christ-like in this earth. So he sent Christ as an example to us. Praise God. And so we know what the word says. We've all read the word. Hallelujah. But we want now that word to be made manifest in our lives to the fullest, to the utmost. Because he is able to save us <laughs> to the utmost. Amen. And so we're calling on an utmost blessing. Okay. And the way we're calling on that utmost blessing is to recognize, first of all, that there's some things in us that may not be right, that may be standing in the way of God, you know? Some of our mindsets, you know, old stuff that hasn't moved out of our way, old understandings, old ideas, old fears, you know, old traumas, you know, that may be hindering the fullness of the glory of God today. His glory is rising, and His glory is rising in you and in I. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the glory today as it relates to fasting and seeking God. And what we're talking about is a preparation for the shaking. God said in Isaiah that he was going to have all of us, we were going to be prepared for the shaking, to be ready that when the shaking, shaking happened, praise God, we wouldn't be the ones that would be shaking. This earth would be shaken and everything that was unlike God would be shaken off. So we want to give God a head start. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God with us individually. So we're calling and we're sanctifying a fast for the month of October to observe God, to observe him in his ways, and to yield ourselves so that our ways will reflect his glory, so that the ways and the things that we do and the thoughts that we have and the way we operate in this life will reflect the glory of God. Whatever it is in, the, in, in our way, we're yielding that up to the Lord, hallelujah, peacefully, so that peaceable fruit can manifest in us. <laughs> oh, oh, hallelujah. Every time I think about it, I just get so happy. I'm so joyous with this because God is initiating this. He wants you to reflect his glory, his unlimited, unmeasurable glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we want everything that's in our way to be out of the way so that we can reflect the true glory of God more and more and more. You see, we're calling on the more anointing of God. We are calling on the more anointing of God. We're calling on God for his more. We're calling on God for more glory, more peace, more love, more joy. Hallelujah. We just want the more. Hallelujah. There is a dispensation of an anointing that's in the earth right now that God has placed in this earth. Hallelujah. He's moving all across the world. We don't want to be, uh, we want to be in that flow. We want to see and know what God is doing. Personally for me, I think one of the, the worst things in life could be is to know God and to love him and not to know his ways and not to see what he's doing everywhere. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not saying to be God, you know, that's not what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about 
God loves this whole earth and he's moving over this whole earth. And I want to know what my Savior, what my God, what my Lord is doing in other places with other people. Praise God. And I don't want to miss out on the, the, the extent of his power on earth. I want all of that power, wherever he's doing it, I want it to be manifested for me as well, for my family and for you. You don't want to miss out on anything that God is doing. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm praying for you, and I want you to pray with me. It's all about the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So we praise God, and, you know, I, I do little praise breaks now and then, so don't mind me. My uh, love is God, and so my heart gives him glory. Hallelujah. My heart gives him the glory. I want to be his glory. I want to be a representative of his glory in this earth. Hallelujah. And I want you to join me in that. Hallelujah. So I praise him. I say hallelujah. I say God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give glory to him. Hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has saved my life and placed me here in this place so that I can share these wonderful words uh, with you. In Isaiah 2.21, there is going to be a shaking, and he says you're going to be ready for the shaking. Hallelujah. That's what this fast is all about, so that we can be ready for his shaking. And as we are ready for the shaking, we are preparing our bodies, hallelujah, uh, to go forth and to radiate his glory. Hallelujah. If there's anything in our bodies and our minds, that's not reflecting the glory of God. We are yielding ourselves, hallelujah, for that to dissipate and for God's glory to rise up in that place, hallelujah, so that we can radiate wherever we go, wherever we are, so that we can radiate his glory and be glory bombs for him. Glory is rising in the earth. I have it on good authority that he's stepping down. He's stepping down on earth himself, hallelujah, and bringing forth a new dispensation of his glory. Hallelujah. And that glory, it says in Isaiah 40, verse 5, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And so what that's telling me is that we haven't seen all the glory yet if it needs to be revealed. Hallelujah. So I want the glory of the Lord to be revealed in me. I want the glory of the Lord to its utmost to be revealed in you. Hallelujah. So that Isaiah 45 will be a true word. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Hallelujah. That your flesh will be made the glory of God and all other flesh will be able to see and re see the reflection of his glory upon you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said he's doing it. And Isaiah 48, 11, he said, this is his thing. Hey, this is my thing. He said, I got this. I'm doing this. Because it's for my sake, he said, that I'm going to do it. For my name to be remembered, I'm doing this. I'm bringing this covenant alive to you so that I would be remembered. Hallelujah. God loves to be remembered. And that's why in my spirit and in my soul, I remember him by praising him every opportunity that I get to praise him. Hallelujah. Because he wants to be praised. That's how we can thank him. That's how we can bless the Lord. We can bless him for all that he's done for us and he asks us for praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give glory and honor to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So arise, it says in Isaiah 61. 60 verse 1. Arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord has risen and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you for the glory. Hallelujah. Isaiah 60, 19 said that, or says that, thy God is thy glory. Hallelujah. Have you seen the manifestations of the glory cloud like the children of Israel have seen? The glory cloud that comes and is so powerful and dynamic that no one can stand in the presence of that glory cloud. And that glory cloud is there not just to knock you down, but it's there to heal you and deliver you and set you free and give you an understanding of who God is in you and who he can be in you. I'm excited. Hallelujah. 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 He says in, in Hebrews or in Haggai 2.19, because the glory of the latter house 
shall be greater than of the former. Now, if in the Old Testament, <laughs> the old house had all that glory, just think how much glory he's bringing with the new and better covenant. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And Christ prayed, Jesus prayed, and John, in the book of John in, new, in the New Testament, 17, verse 5, he says, Father, glorify me with thine glory, with thine own self. Glorify me. And so this fast is all about us yielding to God so that he will glorify us with his own self. Hallelujah. We all, each and all of us, this glory in creation, each of us have our own glory, our own personality, uh, the DNA that he's given us, very unique to ind individual to us. Praise God. And God wants uh, us to magnify the total grace that he's given us in, in the creation. But Christ was praying, not just my glory that you've given me, glorify us with your own self, Father, with you. Now that's what we want. We want to be painted with God's glory. We want to be glorified with God himself. God himself is coming down to glorify you, to place his hand upon you. And a lot of you are seeing the manifestations of the glory already. And me, you know, as a servant of the Lord, I must be obedient to what he is telling me to share with you. And everywhere you go now, you're hearing the word of the glory of God. And God means to bring his glory. Hallelujah. And my part is this part that I'm doing with you right now. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And don't be upset and don't be, you know, how can I say, oh, I keep hearing the, about the glory. You know, everybody's talking about the glory. Oh, I heard that yesterday. Oh, I heard that last week. I know it. I know it. I know it. I'm going to tell you something. When you hear about the glory, one time is not enough. When you know about the glory and you want the glory, two times is not enough. Hallelujah. Three times is not enough. Four times is not enough. You need to immerse yourself in every glory teaching that is from God. You need to immerse yourself in every glory anointing that you can that God assigns you to. Hallelujah. Because you don't want to miss out on his glory. And it bears repeating. Talking about the glory of God promotes the glory of God. Talking about the glory of God gives him glory. And he is in the wings. He is in the anointing of the word on his glory. He loves to be talked about. God loves to be talked about. He loves to be remembered. Hallelujah. And if I have to say hallelujah, praise God, 50 million times, hallelujah, it is my pleasure to honor God in that way. To give him back his glory that he has assigned to us. That is his glory. Hallelujah. We are his glory. Every creation in this earth is to give him glory. That's what the word of God says. The whole earth shall magnify and glorify God. And I don't want this earth right here to miss out on any of that. Hallelujah. I want to do my part and then some in recognizing, understanding, and displaying, hallelujah, the fullness of the glory of God that he has appointed for me in this time and in this dispensation. And I'm giving you this testimony to encourage you Hallelujah. Praise God that get in the glory flow. Get in the glory stream. Now he's manifesting the glory in many different ways. Some people are love to soak in the glory. Praise God. Some people love to dance in the glory. Hallelujah. People fall down under the glory. People get healed in the glory, get delivered in the glory. Arms and legs growing back in the glory. Diamonds falling in the glory. Gold dust falling in the glory. God is an unlimited, unmeasurable God. And he has an unmeasurable anointing in the glory for you. So whatever way is manifesting, get in it. <laughs> get in it. And stay in it until you've reached the fullness of the power of God's glory that he has assigned for you. Hallelujah. Many anointings are going forth on the earth. He's, God has taken that glory. He's cleaning out our bloodlines. He's cleaning out, uh, uh, just blowing us out. Just blowing everything in us out of us that's not like him. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it's all about his presence. It's all about us remembering him. He said he's going to establish his covenant of the power to give us wealth. Oh, hallelujah. He's going to establish his covenant. Hallelujah, to give us wealth so that he will be remembered. It's all about God being remembered. Oh, hallelujah. So, part of our teaching today, hallelujah, is about the glory, but there's a purpose in sharing the glory with you. Hallelujah, because the glory is the end result of the fast. 
hallelujah, that we are, we're going on. It is the end result, hallelujah. We want, through this fast, through this setting aside our energy, our time, our food, to pray and to seek God concerning his glory, concerning what he wants to do for us, in us, on this earth. Now, I shared with you that this glory is a, this uh, fast is a personal fast. Hallelujah. Many people are fasting and praying for the nation, and that's great. But we are going to go each week and each day praying for personal things that are in our lives because we want to get ourselves straight. We want to get ourselves, you know, ready for the outpour of this glory that's coming. Hallelujah. And before we can minister to others, we need to have ourselves correct in God, right? The scripture tells us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Well, guess what? You're not going to love your neighbor uh, more than you love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, if you're not straight, hallelujah, then you cannot love the way that you need to, to love in the fullness of the anointing that God has brought. I'm just going to use a simple example here. You know, when you're flying on a plane and they give you that, that talk, you know, about the airbags and all that stuff or the, um, the, the, um, the life preservers. And so what they do is they tell you for the air, when the oxygen comes out, if anything happens on the plane, okay, and the oxygen mask comes out, if you have other people with you or little ones with you or older Americans with you and they need your help, the first thing you need to do is you need to help yourself. You need to put the uh, oxygen mask on yourself first for breath and for life when you fly. And once you get yourself strong and settled, then you can apply help to others, okay? So what we want to do is we don't want to focus outward so much in this fast in October as we want to focus inward. We want to focus on ourselves. We want to focus on our families. We want to focus on our bloodlines, okay? When Jesus sent, uh, when uh, the Holy Ghost came in Acts, it says, after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. And the power that you're going to receive is to be witnesses, okay, for Jesus, okay? But you're going to be a witness in where? In Jerusalem first. So what that tells me, that there was a home field anointing, okay? A home field advantage. That is home first. They were in Jerusalem, okay? So God wants us to deal with right where we are first, okay? And then with the measure of anointing, the measure of glory, the measure of grace, the measure of mercy that he's given us, then we can go forth and minister to others. So what this fast is about is putting the oxygen mask the mask of life, the breath of life on you first, getting you straightened out first, you know, getting you in the place where God can mold you and make you and shape you and pour forth even more of the fire anointing of his glory in you and through you. I'm excited and I hope that you are, okay? This is the day of your rising. This is the day of your rising. This is the time of your rising. You're rising in the glory of God because the glory of God is rising upon you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, praise God. Um, we, have you ever heard of PUSH, P-U-S-H? Okay, a lot of people will say, you know, how often, how much should I pray? You know, Jesus said to pray without ceasing. But then there's another scripture that says that don't do repetitious, you know, prayers, thinking that, you know, because you prayed over and over and over again, that the, you're going to get that thing. Well, I believe in pushing, okay? And I am, um, you know, an intercessor. And we push into the glory of God. We push into the things of God. We push, hallelujah. And what we're pushing is ourselves and our flesh out of the way. Pushing the enemy out of, way, out of the way so that we can obtain the things that God said is ours. And so push is an acronym for um, praying until something happens. That's praying, P, until you, okay, something, S, H happens. Praying until something happens. What we have seen is that there is a disparity. Okay, between what the Word of God says and what's happening in our lives. Hallelujah. And we're going to push in prayer. We're going to push in fasting until those things that were promised us by God are happening in our lives. We have, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Dave Hogan, a tremendous uh, chief apostle with an apostolic anointing, there, like Paul walking on this earth today. People being raised from the dead and all kinds of manifestations of healings. Well, he didn't have that in the beginning of his ministry. And for years, nothing was happening. But he began to he began to open up the scriptures and to study the scriptures. He studied the scriptures from front, from the Bible, from the, the beginning to the end, 
looking at opportunities in the scripture of what God is saying. He knew God's word was true and he knew it was real. He didn't have a problem believing the word. What was happening is the word was not manifesting in his ministry okay the way that the word of God said it could so as he looked through the scriptures he saw that whenever there was a need whenever there was a need for a breakthrough whenever there was a need okay uh, for something for God to do something special uh, when they were backed in a corner fast were called okay Nehemiah called the fast Ezra called the fast Esther called the fast okay um, and Kings called fast you know, for the whole land to fast and pray and seek God. And every time they fasted and prayed and seek God, sought God, then God operated in their favor. And so that's when he began to fast and pray and seek God over 40 years ago. And he still has fasting and praying as a part of his ministry right now, as a part of what he and his wife and his whole ministry group does. Well, God grew his ministry as a thousand churches. He was down in Mexico. And my husband and I, we really respect David Hogan and what he's done uh, for the body of Christ. But as we look at the processes that he went through to get to where he is today uh, now, uh, part of that process was a fasted life, okay? A fasted life, a prayerful life, giving over to God, where you can manifest limbs growing back in your ministry, where over 500 people have been raised from the dead, you personally responsible for 35 of them. How many of us have that confession right now? How many of us want to be able to have that testimony, you know, that the dead are raised in our midst when it's necessary. Praise God. We in America, we don't see too many dead people, you know, unless they're in a casket or in the funeral home. Hallelujah. But we're talking about the very resurrection power, the same power that brought Christ Jesus from the dead resides in you. And if it's needed, you can have the same authority. Well, we knew that we know that authority is available. We know the healing power of God is available. We know the delivering power of God is, is available. We know that he said our family should be saved if we are saved. Hallelujah, our whole household should be saved. But we're not recognizing a whole lot of these blessings according to what the scripture says, okay? Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly, but that abundant life is not manifesting right now the way that, you know, that the scripture says. Hallelujah. But the word of God is true. It is forever true. It is eternal. So our lives are not, are not lining up with the word. So when our lives are not lining up with the word of God, what can we do? Okay? We see in the scriptures that when their lives were not lining up with the word of God, they fasted. They fasted and they prayed and they sought God. Okay? If you diligently seek the Lord, he's going to reward you. Okay, praise God. If you ask what you need, and his words abide in you and you abide in him, you shall have what you ask. That's what Jesus said. But one of the things that we must do is get his word, believe his word, and get that word to abide in us. Whatever that word is saying, hallelujah, it needs to be manifested in our lives. So one way that we can do this, we know that if the word says it and the word is true, and our lives are not lining up to what the word says, then the problem is not the word, the problem is us. Okay? And so there are things that God has set in place for us to devoid ourselves of this worldly flesh, these worldly mindsets, and to get in the place where God's promises can be yea, can be yea and amen to us. Hallelujah. Don't discount the word of God because you're not seeing the word manifest in your life. The word is true. The word is real. real. The word is power. Okay? Jesus is the word made live. In the beginning was the word. God spoke the word and the word is eternal. So what am I going to do? I'm going to line my little um, uh, self up with what the Word of God says. And if it's not, if I'm, if I can't quite reach it, then guess what? God has made a provision for us to bridge the gap between what we are seeing in our lives and to what His Word says. And one of the ways that we can bridge the gap between our lives and what the Word of God says is to fast and pray and seek God. To seek God first of all. But even to add more power and fire, you know, to that, to, uh, to it is to fast and seek him. It's just showing God you really mean business. I'm going to turn away my plate. Esther fasted. You know, Nehemiah fasted. Ezra fasted. Hallelujah. The kings um, uh, called fast. Even in Nineveh, the king, after Jonah went and gave him that word, the king called a whole fast for the whole nation. Everybody had to fast. Even the animals and the babies. Three days, no food. Praise God. Can we do that today? Oh, is there a need for it to happen today? There's definitely a need for it. Hallelujah. But whether or not we would call a fast like that, whether or not we would proclaim a fast like that is another thing. So we are proclaiming a fast for the month of October. It is a fast for our personal lives. 
for us personally and for our families. And it is coming before the month of November, which is typically a feast month. Thanksgiving is a holy day, holiday, holy day. It is a holy day, a sign for us to feast and to rejoice and to give glory to God for all of his blessings. But before we go into feasting, the month of October will be a fast month for us to seek God like we've never sought him before, to pull out all the stops, to go full throttle and go forth and get what those things are that he said are ours, to proclaim a fast, hallelujah, Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast in 2 Chronicles 23 as well, hallelujah. Now, hallelujah, praise God. We're going to read some scriptures uh, from 2 Chronicles, and then we are going to um, begin to pray, hallelujah, bless the Lord, thank you Jesus, 2 Chronicles Seven, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Praise God. Hallelujah. If my people, who are called by my name, I'm a, I'm a people, I'm a God's people, I'm called by his name, and I'm humbling myself, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to humble myself by fasting. Okay, and I want you to join us. We have Trifene and Betty, Jeremiah and Tiffany. They're all joining in this fast because they mean business with God. Do you mean business with God? Do you want the things of God to manifest in your life and to manifest now, today? Hallelujah. I do, and I want them for you. So what I'm going to read right now is Isaiah 58, verse 6. We're going to go over that scripture. Hallelujah. Turn to Isaiah 58, verse 6, if you have your Bibles there. And now Isaiah 58 is the is the, the book where they they are actually talking about fasting uh, in Isaiah. So the one the scripture though that I want to share with you, Hallelujah, to loose the bands of wickedness and to let the oppressed go free is not this the fast that I have chosen for you, okay? Isaiah 58 and which one was that? 58 verse six. Is not this the fast that I've chosen for you? to loose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out into their house, into your house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shalt thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Then shalt thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in draught, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places and thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of paths to dwell in. And so we're focusing on, that was Isaiah 58, verse 6 through 12, the promises of God for fasting. First of all, we're fasting to loose the bands of wickedness in our lives and in the lives of our families. We are fasting to undo the heavy burdens Okay, praise God to have people. We know that there are people that have heavy burdens, even in our bloodline, and we're fasting to undo those burdens. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And to loose the bands of wickedness. There are people that are still in wickedness. Hallelujah. And we, and even in our bloodline, in our families, and we want to destroy uh, the wickedness. And this is the fast that I've chosen, he said, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. And that you break, not some yokes, but that you break every yoke. You have authority in God through fasting and praying that every yoke will be broken. Okay, remember I said push, pray.
pray until something happens. If that is the promise of God and you still are seeing yokes in your life and in the lives of your family, then you are to pray and fast until every yoke is broken because that is what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, hallelujah, there's more to a fast than just, uh, you know, not eating. You can also feed the hungry. You can clothe the poor. Those who, you know, are homeless, you can bring them into your house. Okay, when you see the naked, you know, if they don't have any clothes, give them some clothes. And don't hide yourself from your own flesh. This is a very important scripture that a lot of people, uh, uh, they, don't, they don't talk about this scripture. And there's two ways that it can be taken. Your own flesh is your flesh, but it is also your family. It relates to your family. Praise God. Don't hide yourself from your own flesh. You know you got issues in your flesh. Why you keep burying that junk in your personality under the rug like nobody sees it and like God, you know, doesn't see it. The word of God is telling you right now, don't hide from your own flesh. When you fast, God is going to break every yoke. He's going to destroy everything that's coming against you. And, you know, you think that because, you know, this sin that you're having, this stuff that's in your flesh, you think that you're the only one that know about it? You know, God will reveal your stuff to whoever he needs to reveal it to to get you set free and delivered. So stop hiding. There is no place to hide. Don't you know the word of God says that God is everywhere? His spirit is everywhere. If you go in down to hell, he's down there too. There's no way to run from God. Nowhere to run. Okay? Nowhere to hide. Okay? God is everywhere. So you may as well cough that stuff up. You may as well confess that stuff. Uh, to God. And there's a scripture that also says confess your sins one to another to people who you trust. You know, God knows what's in your flesh and that's what the fast is all about, to beat the flesh down and to get that junk out of the way so God can have his way with us, with his glory. Hallelujah. And so the other side of that is, another way that that, that can be taken is don't neglect mercy. Don't neglect kindness. Okay? Um, so if you hide yourself from your own flesh, not only are you flesh, but that's talking about your bloodline, your family, okay? The people who are of you, who you came from and who came from you, your generation and your generations that you already have on this earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't hide yourself. Don't hide the glory that God has given you from your family. Don't hide Jesus. You know who you believe in Jesus. You know who you are. When you get around your family, because they're not believers, you close up. You know, you close your mouth. You know, you don't say anything. You're scared to talk about what God has done for you around those unsaved loved ones. Stop hiding yourself from your family. That's your own flesh. The scripture tells us to talk about the word of God, to talk about Jesus, to, to talk about his word day and night with our families. To give glory to God day and night. Whether they believe or whether they don't believe, you're hiding you're hiding your faith. You're hiding, you know, who you are, you know, from your own flesh. And if they can't see God in you, and if they don't know who God is in you, the promises of God will not manifest totally the way they need to. Because he said your whole household will be saved if you're saved. If you give your heart to God, the promise is your whole household. But if you're in the household saved, all backed up in a corner somewhere, scared to, you know, to talk about your faith, hallelujah, Jesus said, you know, don't be ashamed of me, because if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Okay? So ain't no shame in your game. Hallelujah. You can stand proud. You can stand confident. You can stand bold uh, in the anointing and the grace that God has given you. You have partake, uh, partaken of the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. The Savior of the world is with you. You're a believer in the Savior of this world. What are you taking a back step for? What are you ashamed of? Hallelujah. When God's glory fills this earth, you're connected to the power of God. You're connected to the God who created this earth. Hallelujah. Ain't no shame in that. No shame for those who wait upon the Lord, who call upon his name, who call upon his name in truth. Hallelujah. You stand up for your faith. You stand up for who you are. And if you're not doing it, there's fear on the inside of you. So that's what this fast is about as well. Getting you prepared, moving all that junk out of your flesh, moving the fear out, moving the dread out, moving the shyness out, you know, whatever it is, you know, that's in the way of God shining his total glory through you. The fast is about moving it out of the way. Okay. 
Praise God. And so, hallelujah. We're to help not only ourselves, but we're to help others. But this particular fast is all about you. If you draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light in uh, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness as the noonday. Now we are considering ourselves as being the afflicted souls at this time, because we want the Lord in verse eleven to guide us continually and to satisfy our souls when we are dry, okay, and to make fat our bones, not our bodies, but our bones. Making fat our bones is giving us strength in our inner man and in our inner core. Hallelujah. And so that we will be like the water garden. That's verse 11. And like the spring of water whose waters fail not. Listen to this. And they that shall be of thee. We're talking about our families now, okay? They that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. The anointing and grace that God has given you, hallelujah, to affect changes through Jesus Christ in your family. He's made a promise that he's going to use your generations, okay, those that have come from you, to build the old waste places. He's going to put an anointing on them to continually be a great member of society, to be used by him in this society to, to look at the gaps and the breaches in society and to build them up, to build up the land, to build up the people, to fortify, hallelujah, his glory and his anointing in this earth. Hallelujah. So he says, they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, and thou shalt rise, raise up the foundations of many generations. You, right now, through the glory of God, your generations will be a foundation for other generations. Hallelujah. Right now, you are undergirding your bloodline. Hallelujah. To be a foundation for the rest of the generations of your entire life. Hallelujah. There are generations on the inside of you, Tritheme. Generations that have come from you, Betty. Your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. These, because of your prayer, because of your fasting, because of you seeking God on their, their behalf, it's not just about their lives today. It's about continuing the foundation of the glory of God throughout eternity. That's why God has called you to glory. Hallelujah. Let's save our generations first. Let's pray for our generations first so that they can build up the... Uh, Waste, old waste places, all the places that have been wasted and destroyed, the old haunts, the old places, the old uh, traumas, the old junk that's on the inside of our bloodline, those old bloodline curses, the foundation that you're establishing right now will be a foundation for your generations for eternity. Hallelujah. What an awesome responsibility God has given us as men and women of God, that our generations will build up the waste places. They will be the foundations for many generations. Hallelujah. And then they were going to call us in our bloodline the repairer of the breach and the restorer of paths to dwell in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is the anointed word, hallelujah, for our fast. Hallelujah. We're praying for ourselves to get all of the afflictions off of us. And then we're praying for our bloodline, for our own flesh, hallelujah, to be repairers of the breach, to build up the old waste places, hallelujah, to be foundations for eternity in the glory of God, hallelujah. That's how important you are right now. That's how important this dispensation that you are in right now. Yes, for you and yes, for today. But God has called you to be a foundation and undergirding for the rest of your uh, bloodline for, the, for eternity, do you know how important that is? Do you know how great that is? Yeah. That God has given you this call, not just for you today, yeah. but it's for eternity, for your, for your generations, for eternity, yeah. to be repairers of the breach, to build up the old waste places. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Father, and we accept the call. We accept the anointing. Are you with me? Are you accepting this anointing for the fast? We have proclaimed and we're sanctifying a fast now. Whenever you talk about fasting, people don't really, you know, like to fast. They, you know, it's just not in so far. It hasn't been a great call in this dispensation. And I'm going to tell you something in these days, in this time, in the 21st century, in some uh, denominations and in some teachings, fasting has gone by the wayside. They're saying that we don't need to do this. Hallelujah. But I want to let you know that it is a tool that is used in the scriptures. 
and we are going to use every tool at our hand. We're going full throttle. We're going to touch all the bases, okay? Because this is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 5, verse 33 and 34. Now, you're going to, you know that there are people that are teaching, hey, fasting is over. We don't need to do that anymore. Praise God. And some people don't believe in fasting. Some people maybe don't need to fast, okay? But in my walk with the Lord, personally, I have needed to fast. And fasting has been a great benefit to me, you know, in my walk with the Lord. Maybe not to everybody, and that's okay. Okay, but it has benefited me. It has saved my life. When I was uh, diagnosed with cancer and had two breasts removed from cancer, praise God, you know, for two and a half years in that battle with cancer. I'm going to tell you something. Among other things, it wasn't just the fasting, but I'm going to tell you something. The fasting was one of the things that helped to save my life. Why I am here today... Praise God. It was the fasting and seeking God, turning away food, listening to God as far as what he would have me eat. And I'm going to share some of that with you before we get off the phone. But Luke chapter 5, praise God, hallelujah. Luke chapter 5, and we're going to do verses um, 33 and 34. And they said unto him, and this is his disciples talking to him, why do, well, I mean, the other people talking like the Pharisees, and they said unto him, this is Jesus they're talking to, why do the disciples of John, excuse me, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but your disciples eat and drink. Okay, so they're questioning Jesus. They're saying, hey, Jesus, there are all the other disciples of all these other people that are of God, they're, they're disciples fast. Okay, and they make many prayers. But we've taken a look at your disciples, and your disciples, man, they're tearing it up. They're eating. They're eating everything, you know? Why? And it was really a good question. And I don't really think that they were trying to put Jesus down with this question. They just wanted some clarification. They saw a disparity in what other disciples of men of God were doing and what Jesus' disciples, you know, were doing. Praise God. And so they wanted to know what was going on. Why was that, Okay. And, and Jesus said unto them, Can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the, while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Jesus, I mean, even though he's with us, He's alive. He's with us. He sent the Holy Ghost to be our teacher and our comforter. But he's not actually walking the earth as he was with his disciples. Can you imagine walking? Jesus is here with you every day and you're fasting for Jesus and Jesus is with you. Okay, you don't need to. That's what he said. I'm the bridegroom. I'm with them. Okay, they don't need to fast now. It's when I go, that's when they can fast. And so we are fasting now because we have old wineskins. And Jesus told the parable of the new and the old wineskins, okay? And he spake unto the par a parable unto them after he answered that question. He says, No man puts a piece of new garment upon an old garment. If otherwise, then both the new maketh uh, a hole or rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. No man puts new wine into old wine bottles else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles will perish. But new wine must be put in new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith, the old is better. But I want to tell you, with the parable of Jesus, and Jesus telling this parable, after he, they asked him, why aren't your disciples fasting? And what he's saying is that, you know, you cannot put new wine. He's bringing some new anointings, new realms of glory. We're in a new realm of glory right now. He's bringing new graces, new mercies. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is moving in a way today. Oh, hallelujah. The glory is rising and it's all a new realm. We've been talking about the new realms of glory. Hallelujah. And when we talk about the freshness of God, the newness of God and what he's doing, we got some old wineskins. We got the old way of thinking. We got the old paradigms. We got the old uh, doctrines, you know, that may need to be a little bit adjusted. 
Okay, we got old mindsets. Hallelujah. How, God, how is God going to put his new wine, his new anointing, his new grace, you know, in you when you're carrying the old? Okay, and some people are carrying the old, as he said, to the degree that they don't even want the new because they say the old is better. All right. Well, I want the new. I want the new thing that God is doing. And I want you to have the new things that God is doing. And I want you to be prepared. And he wants you to be prepared. And that's what this is all about. Preparedness. Preparing you for to be a new wineskin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Getting the old out of the way so God can pour forth his new wine, his new anointing, his new glory. Hallelujah. Into you. Glory realms. Healing. Deliverance. Money, we've been talking about money, supernatural weight loss, whatever it is that you need, God wants to pour that into you. Hallelujah. And he wants that old wineskin <clears throat> to be made brand new. Okay, if you can make the old new, no, actually he wants to throw out the old and bring in the new. Okay, there's some stuff, foundational stuff that you can keep, but there's some stuff in your thinking, in your mind that you don't need to keep. So God is refreshing us. He's going to refresh us. And it's all about the preparation for this new anointing. I'm telling you, God has spoken to me about the million dollar seed that he's bringing in this new realm of glory. And he's given people seeds of money to, um, to, to sow into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's bringing supernatural, uh, like never before, he's bringing supernatural debt cancellation. Hallelujah. He's bringing supernatural weight loss, supernatural healings. God is supernatural. And we should be living a supernatural life every day. And so this fast is going to establish that place in us where we can be in tune to God, where we can fine tune, you know, uh, our relationship with him and our, our love for him so that we can be made brand new to receive the new. Hallelujah. So he's not going to put his new stuff in that old understanding you have, in that old junk you have. We got a lot of junk up in there. We're Christians. We're believers. But there's a whole lot of junk up in the basket. Okay. And he's removing that junk and the fast is going to help to do that. It's going to help you be prepared. Now, I was a Girl Scout for 10 years, okay? From 10 years old to 17 years old. And every time we had a meeting, it was be prepared. I was taught and raised up, you know, in, in scouting to be prepared, okay? And, and, and so that's my model. I even went to the doctor one time and he was doing some work on my, the foot doctor. He was doing some work on my foot and I wore regular shoes. And when, after he did the work on my toe, you know, I took out my sandals. He says, you must have been a Girl Scout. Because <laughs> I couldn't put my shoes on with a big bandage on my foot. So I had sandals, you know, open-toed sandals. And he knew, you know, that anointing. He saw that glory, okay, that I knew that I needed to be prepared for whatever it was that he was going to do to walk out of there with shoes on my feet. So I brought open-toed shoes because he was doing work on my toes. And the doctor recognized that I had been a Girl Scout and that I knew the model, be prepared. He said, you must have been a Girl Scout because you're totally prepared. Well, not only am I a Girl Scout, was a Girl Scout, right now I'm a believer, hallelujah, in God, hallelujah, through his son Christ Jesus. And God is a God of preparedness, okay? He gets us ready for whatever he is going to do. And he said, I'm not going to do anything on earth unless I reveal it to my prophets first. Talking about preparation, hallelujah. Look at Esther, she was prepared a whole year to be the queen of Persia. A whole year before she could even go into the king. They had to oil her down, uh, uh, cleanse her skin. For a whole year, she went through the spa. She went through a beauty treatment for a whole year. How would you look if you were in a beauty treatment for a whole year? Hallelujah. Well, think of the fast as a beauty treatment from God. That God is beautifying you. Hallelujah. Getting you ready for the inner court. Getting you ready for the, uh, for the bridal chamber. Okay? He's getting you ready for the inner anointing, for the glory anointing. Hallelujah. That's what the fast is all about. Being prepared. Hallelujah. To receive him and to be in a place where you have done all that you know that you can do to be prepared for him. Hallelujah. To, re to bring that fire anointing, to bring that glory anointing on you so that you can be that glory bomb. God is taking us from glory to glory, from glory to glory to glory. Oh, hallelujah. Let's be prepared. Join us in this 30-day fast starting uh, in October. It's a personal fast, and we're going to guide you and lead you through the whole entire process. We're going to give you recipes, different things that you can eat You know, during the fast. It's going to be a vegetable fast. It's going to be a fruit fast, like Daniel's. Okay? Praise God. And water. Okay? And so we're going to interchange how many meals that we fast each week. Okay, so our bones can be strengthened, hallelujah, by God. So our bones can be made fat, 
hallelujah, so that we can be prepared like Esther was prepared, hallelujah, like Jesus prepared 33 years before he started his ministry. Hallelujah. This is one month that God is asking you for. And even Jesus went out and fasted 40 days. He didn't have any water or food for 40 days as he prepared for the ministry and call that God had on his life. Hallelujah. I want that glory for you. I want it for me. This is a personal fast. We are preparing ourselves. And it's okay. You know, there's some people that are not going to be able to join in with us. Some people are not ready for this kind of thing yet. Hallelujah. But for those of you that are called to this and you know that you're called to this, don't wink at God right now and say, maybe later, God. Now is the time to start. You do not want to miss. You don't want this glory to just, just go over your head, to go past you. You want to be in this flow. You want to be in this stream. And so let's do everything that we can do to prepare ourselves for God's uh, glory rising, you know, up on the inside of us. Prepare. Hallelujah. What did Jesus, what did, uh, what did um, John the Baptist go forth saying? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Get ready, get set, knowing that the Lord is coming. He's coming down the path. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. You have some power. You have some authority to prepare yourself to receive of Jesus, to receive of his power, to receive of his glory. Hallelujah. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus is rising. The glory is rising on the inside of us, and he just wants you to be prepared. We're starting on October 1st. And so now let's get down to some of the things that you can do to be prepared for this fast. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is a vegetable fast. It's a Daniel's fast, a modified Daniel's fast, okay? And so we're, we're not going to eat any wheat. We're not going to eat any meat or dairy. We're not going to eat any sweets, okay? So we will do vegetables and we will do fruit and your drink shall be water. Now this is going to be a real fast for me because I have to not drink coffee or not drink tea uh, during this fast. It's going to be a water fast for a month. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm asking God for strength. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I've been fasting. I've been on this fast for um, a couple of months now, you know, where I have uh, been just doing vegetables, okay? No, it hasn't been a couple of months. It's been one month. And I've been preparing myself for this next phase of the fast, hallelujah, because I want the glory, hallelujah. So uh, I have not been eating meat except for on Sunday, a little bit, a couple of ounces, and I have not been doing any sweets at all, even though I relegated myself to one little bit of sweet on Saturday. So. Okay, but Monday through Friday, it is total vegetable and uh, fruit, okay, so and modified, but I still drink coffee and tea, but I'm coming into this fast in October where I'm not even going to do the coffee and tea because God is instructing us to drink water, to eat vegetables, I'm, I'm serious about this, okay, and I am preparing myself for this because I want that million dollar seed, okay, Praise God. I want that supernatural weight loss. I want to see people healed and delivered in the ministry that God has given me to a greater degree. Hallelujah. I mean business with God. And if God is setting aside this time to prepare us, then I'm going to do my part. Hallelujah. And if I do fall, if I do get weak and, you know, have a sip of coffee, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not going to beat myself down in condemnation. I'm just going to start all over again. And I'm not prophesying that this is going to happen. But the reality of it is that it's a possibility that it could happen. It's going to be a 30-day fast. But we're asking God to give us the strength to do the fast the way that he's calling us to do it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be on every morning just for a few minutes. I'm going to share recipes with you, uh, different things that you can do uh, to keep your hunger down and, and to be in this place to keep the mindset that God wants you to have. We'll pray every day, hallelujah, together. And we're going to work this thing together. You're not alone out there. We're going to do this thing together, hallelujah. And together we're going to see the glory of God uh, manifest. Hallelujah. Together we're going to gather up that million dollar seed that he has for us. We're going to do this thing together. God has promised it to me and I am sharing it with you because I want you to be a part in this. And I want you to be prepared for all that God is going to be doing on this earth. Hallelujah. Remember, we want to put new wine into new wineskins, not old. Okay. Praise God as Jesus uh, told that parable. Hallelujah. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone. Uh, who is listening, who is watching, hallelujah, right now in Jesus' name, strengthen them through this fast. You, you, Jesus went on a 40-day fast. We hear people doing 40 days, 10 days, 20 days, without any food or water. 
This is a modified Daniel's fast. You've even allowing us to eat during this fast. Hallelujah. As we seek you personally for our personal uh, uh, relationship with you. And as we seek you for our families and our bloodlines to establish that foundation uh, that you have called us to establish in our bloodline. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, strengthen us. Uh, for this fast, Father. We yield to you. We yield to your glory. We humble ourselves before you, Father. We lay ourselves before you, prostrate, Father. We come before you, hallelujah, in humble adoration. Hallelujah, Father. Help us to understand and to know the greater lengths and the greater depths of your glory in this earth. We're seeking you for it because we know there's more. We know there's more. Hallelujah. Our lives all that is not are not lining up 100% to your word of healing, health, and abundance. And we want our lives to line up. We want our, li our lives to line up, hallelujah, with your glory. Oh, hallelujah. So we're putting ourselves in the way of preparedness. As John the Baptist said, prepare ye the way of the Lord. The Lord cometh because his glory is rising and it's rising in us. And we don't want to be a weak link in that chain. We want every chain broken, hallelujah, but in the chain and the power of God, we want to do our part in power and in glory and all the anointing that you have for us on this earth today. So we thank you, Father, hallelujah, for your power and your glory. And as far as fasting is concerned, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity. And we're taking Jesus' leadership, hallelujah, in this. We're going to do a 30-day fast but we're going to do a Daniel's fast. So here's how it's going to work. We're starting on October 1st, and we're going to go through October 31st. And I um, will be giving you different recipes, different uh, things that you can eat. And, you know, you can eat straight vegetables if you want, but there are many different ways that you can prepare the, the vegetables so that it will still be tasty to you, even though you're fasting. You will not be doing any sweets. You will not be doing any wheat. That's bread, okay? You will not be uh, doing any dairy, okay? So it'll be straight vegetables and fruits and water, okay? Praise God. And, and so there are so many different ways that you can fix your vegetables. Uh, I have a recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you. It is called tofu pizza, okay? And the base of the pizza is not uh, a crust, a bread. It is tofu, and it, it's absolutely scrumptious. I also have some ideas for you on uh, doing collard greens, not only collard greens, but kale, mustard greens, and turnip greens. You want to make these greens a part of your diet during, during this fast. These greens will strengthen your bones and strengthen you and keep you strong during this fast. Not only will they do that, but they will provide a detoxification for you. As you're eating the greens, praise God, and drinking the water, I mean, there's things that are going on in your body in the natural as well. This is a healing process. When I had the cancer, God told me to eat collard greens, okay? And here lately, in the last year, he gave me a nine-day fast. And that nine-day fast, he told me to eat collard greens every day, cooked collard greens every day, but they had to be fresh. So for nine days, in my obedience to God, I cooked greens, collard greens, fresh collard greens, every day for nine days and ate them because that's what the Holy Spirit instructed me to do. And so it was um, a detoxification for my body and a strengthening for my body. Whatever it was that the nutrients that were in those collard greens was working on my body to heal it and to restore it. Okay? And remember, Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And he came for our healing and health. Well, he can give you ways to eat that won't get you sick so he won't have to heal you. Okay? So he knows what your body needs. And so my first recipe that I'm going to give to you, you know, most of us African-Americans, we like to cook our greens with um, smoked pork, okay, or smoked turkey. But remember, this fast is a non-meat fast, okay? We will not be doing any meat with our greens. And I have a fabulous recipe that you can saute collard greens and kale together if you want, or you can do collard greens by himself or kale by himself. Now, kale is really potent for me. That is a potent green uh, leafy green, okay? So, and there are other greens like mustard greens and uh, turnip greens, okay? So, you want to have a leafy green, at least uh, one, I, I, I eat them every day. I have one serving of these greens every day because I cook them and I have, and I freeze them and then I take them out a single serving for me to eat every day as my main course, okay? 
So collard greens can be your main course, and this is how you can prepare them. This is another way to prepare them. You can get them chopped up already in the, in the bag, or you can buy them fresh, you know, uh, not in the bag, and cut them up yourself. But you want uh, a batch or two batches, you know, if you're planning to eat them, you know, more than once in the week. So I would say get two bags and cook them, okay? Uh, and two bags will give you about four to five servings individual. And so what you want to do is chop up the greens, but before you put them in the pan, you're going to use a cast iron pan or pot. But get a cast iron pan or your frying pan that you use, and you're going to use two tablespoons of olive oil, that's vegetable, or coconut oil. No more than two tablespoons. And you're going to take one large onion, and you're going to chop that onion up and saute it along with three cloves of garlic. Okay? And guess what? This is the surprise ingredients. You're going to take a whole container. I think it's either six ounces or eight ounces of mushrooms. That's right, mushrooms. So you're going to saute. After you cut up the onions and the mushrooms, okay you are going to saute the onions and mushrooms in your oil either olive oil or coconut oil it's, those are vegetable oils but you don't want to use too much okay and you saute them down you don't want to cook them all the way but just get them sauteed down a little bit and then you're going to put your collard greens in that frying pan and you're going to saute and you're going to simmer down the greens with the onions and the mushrooms and the garlic okay and so you, um, you also, too, I forgot to tell you to cut your garlic up. You know, if you like a lot of garlic, you can put more garlic. But what's going to happen is sometimes collard greens have a tendency to be bitter. Okay, so guess what? The sugar, did you know that sugar was in onions, sweet onions? The sugar in the onions are going to take the bitterness out of the greens, okay? And then you'll still have the onion flavor. And you want more garlic. You want the garlic in there for your flavor, too. But the mushrooms are a great crunch that is going to be provided for the greens and they're going to give you that extra vitamin D you know that you need uh, for your bones remember the scripture says he's going to make your bones fat and that's just one recipe and that can be your main meal you can have it with a salad a cold salad if you want or other vegetables okay but the collard greens you find are going to make you strong okay and you're going to feel your strength while you are eliminating other foods that you normally eat especially with the wheat if you're a bread eater and a meat eater you're going to need something to just sustain your strength while you fast, okay? Especially if this is something that you're not used to doing, okay? Your body has to get used to it, but you still want to, you know, God is allowing us in this fast to get, continue to give our body strength, okay? So that recipe is a, a large onion, three or four cloves of garlic chopped up with mushrooms, okay? A whole container of mushrooms. And you're going to saute those in either olive oil or coconut oil. And when they get soft, but not too soft, okay, you are going to put your chopped up collard greens on top of them. These are fresh greens, okay? Put them on top. And then put um, a cup of water in there. No, two cups of water in the frying pan. And then you're going to slowly simmer those greens with the onions, the mushroom, and the garlic mixture. While you put also two cayenne pepper in it, okay? Any other kind of seasonings that you have, herbs that you you want to uh, to spice up your greens, you know, you can use hot seeds, you know, all, all kinds of, you can use basil if you want, thyme, you know, all kinds of mixtures of herbs, okay, and this is really great because the herbs are going to give those greens a wonderful, wonderful flavor, but you're going to use your favorite herbs, I'm not going to tell you which herbs to use, you can use oregano if you want, okay, but season the greens to your taste, okay, and it's going to be an exciting time, you know, as you see what God, how God is going to bless you when you follow this recipe. This was an anointed word that I received from the Holy Ghost to eat collard greens nine days in a row during my fast, and it healed my body. It, collard greens were used to help me be healed from cancer as well. All right? And so I use collard greens, and I use kale sometimes, mustard greens, and turnips. So green, you want the green leaves, but I am going to recommend the collard greens to you specifically because that's the word that God gave me. So I'm sharing the glory that God gave me with you. Okay, so and again, you can try all the other greens as well, and that will be your staple. That will be your staple meal, and you can pre prepare this ahead of time and take um, uh, smaller amounts out once they're done. Now, you're going to simmer these for a while. The other thing I forgot to tell you that sometimes the collard greens have a tendency towards being a little tough, and if you don't like them tough, you're going to put a teaspoon, let's say two teaspoons of baking soda in with them while they're cooking, and that's going to cause them to be soft. I like mine softer, so I use baking soda 
to make them soft, okay? Uh, so simmer them until they're done and you can cook them, you know, to the degree that you want them. Some people like them a little crispy and some people like them real soft. I personally can, can, uh, like mine real soft. I like vegetables, you know, I like my vegetables overcooked. So, I mean, hey, you know, that's my thing, but that may not be your thing, but you don't have to cook them, you know, until they're, you know, uh, real, real soft. You can cook them too in the consistency that you want, okay? But remember, you're gonna have collard greens, a serving of collard greens every day, and once you cook them, take a, take the, once they cool off, you know, take a, a serving size for you and put it in individual bags and put them in the freezer. And so when you're ready, you know, to, uh, and when you get hungry during the fast, that food will already be prepared for you. And you won't have a tendency to go get the potato chips or go get snacks or eat the meat because nothing else is prepared. Your greens will be prepared ahead of time. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want to share with you uh, is sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are a vegetable. All right. And so they are sweet, though. Remember, we're not eating any other sweets, but if there's natural sweet in the vegetable, it's okay. So here's a tip for you. You can eat the sweet potatoes the way you want, but this is the way that I prepare them when I'm fasting. And I'm gonna share this recipe with you, and it's not even really a recipe. You're gonna take three or four sweet potatoes, okay? No matter what size they are, they have the medium to large. And what you wanna do is bake them until they're done in the oven. You can rub a little um, oil on them if you want, but you don't have to. We're talking coconut oil or olive oil. But you don't have to, just put them on a baking sheet, put them in the, oil, in the oven for 45 uh, minutes to an hour, depending upon how many you have in there and how hot your oven is. And when they get soft, okay, when they're done, take them out. And here's what you can do. You can actually put these um, sweet potatoes in your refrigerator, okay, and eat them, slice them. And it's really great because when you slice them, you know, down, they look like little round pieces of cake or little round cookies, okay, and they're sweet, but they're a vegetable. And so I'll cut a couple of uh, rounds off my sweet potatoes and add them to my meal with my collard greens. So it's almost, it's like a treat, it's like a dessert, but it still is a vegetable. Okay, you're gonna eat the sweet potatoes plain. Now you can add other stuff, but you're not gonna be adding that butter and you're not gonna load the sweet potato up with marshmallows and you know brown sugar. That's not how you're eating them. You're gonna eat them plain. There are other ways to eat them. You can add other herbs if you want to. But remember, this is a vegetable fast. Herbs are vegetables, they're grown in the ground. So you can use any of the herbs that you want to use to season your food. For me, the sweet potato, I, sweet potato is one of my top 10 foods along with collard greens. So um, that's why I'm sharing this with you. So I can just eat a sweet potato just baked in the oven. I mean, it is wonderful to me, okay? And so you prepare those sweet potatoes ahead so that when it's time even to snack, if you feel like, you know, you need a snack and you're, you're a little bit hungry, just slice off a piece of the sweet potato and munch on sweet potatoes. <laughs> Praise God, I think that's an excellent idea. So those are the first two hints or tips that I'm giving you to be prepared. Remember, prepare ye the way of the Lord and you prepare your food ahead of time for this fast. Go out, uh, if you're joining us in the fast, and get your canned vegetables, get your fresh vegetables, any vegetable that you like, you can eat. You can eat vegetable soup, you can make vegetable soup, and I like the kind of soup that is the everything soup. Every vegetable that I have in my, free, in my refrigerator, I'll pour it in the soup. Plus some frozen ones, you know, corn and spinach and you know, okra and um, celery, and I love green onions or scallions, and I'll add them to everything, to my salads, okay? So I'll eat cold salads, but I prefer to have my salad, <laughs> my vegetables warm. So I'll make a, a, a soup with them, and I'll use a, a bouillon uh, cube or any of my herbs for a base, okay? Uh, there is coconut milk that you can use for a base, hallelujah and almond milk these are vegetable products okay that are made from vegetables and remember this is a vegetable fast so there you have it you have your collard greens and you have your sweet potatoes okay and remember october 1st we're starting we're just going to miss one meal and that's going to be the breakfast meal okay make sure you have the water that you drink here in phoenix everybody buys water because the water is not really that great from the faucet so make sure if you if you are uh, you buy your water make sure you have your stacks of water ready and available because you're going to be drinking a lot of water, okay, uh, as you get thirsty and as your body is in, in, in need of um, um, rejuvenation, you're going to do it with the water. So it's going to be vegetables and water. Now, there are all other kind of vegetables. I just shared a couple of my hints with you with the collard greens and with the, um, with the sweet potatoes. Um, every day I'll share one new way to fix it, uh, a vegetable. I'm going to show you 
uh, how to make that um, that pizza from tofu okay praise God and that might be something that you like as well so we don't want you in this first week to feel depraved because you're not depraved from food you're actually doing a wonderful wonderful thing in preparedness and preparing yourself to receive the glory of God hallelujah so uh, I'm going to come back on uh, tomorrow morning as well and uh, just go over some other tips to get ready to go make sure you get all of your stuff all together for you your, your, that you're going to have for this week your vegetables okay you're going to be eating vegetables um, you're going to be eating fruit. And remember the fruit, apples, oranges, pears, peaches, bananas. All fruit is legal uh, on this uh, fast, okay? So make sure you go out and get your fresh fruit. And remember, if you buy canned fruit, okay, you can eat the canned fruit, but it should not have any sugar added to it, okay? This is a sugarless, a sugarless fast. No wheat, no meat, no sweets, no dairy, okay? And so there are ways. I even went out last night and I got some vegetable sausages. And I have in my freezer some veggie burgers, okay? And we're going to be sharing some of that with you, too. Those are other options for you. Now, if you've never eaten these things, they could be a little bit different for you. And there's another thing that I like, kale and quinoa bites, okay, made from kale. And they're a little round. They like meatballs, but they're not made from meat. They're made from kale and quinoa. So those are awesome as well for snacks. But, you know, that can be down the road as you're getting used to uh, this new way of eating and your as your taste buds uh, change during the month okay for uh, you know newer types of uh, vegetables and ways to present vegetables okay praise God so um, we're gonna start off with water for breakfast on Saturday Saturday is October 1st and you can have fruit and veggies for lunch uh, I'm starting to uh, get my refrigerator all stocked I usually keep fresh fruit anyway so we have um, um, cantaloupe oranges, apples, bananas, grapes, raisins, nuts, okay, all of these things can be used uh, in this diet, I mean, not in this diet, but in this fast, okay, so we're seeking God, and we're preparing our bodies, and remember the first week, we're only going to fast one meal, and we'll have two meals, but you're not going to be doing very much with eating in between meals, okay, once you have that evening meal, okay, after that evening meal, you should not be eating anything else other than drinking water, Okay, so it will be dinner, and then we'll fast all night long, hallelujah, pray in the morning, and then have uh, vegetables and fruit for lunch, and vegetables and fruit for dinner. This is exciting. I'm really excited that you're with me and that you're joining me on this. God is going to be doing some great things, and I'm excited for you, praise God, and I'm excited for me. Praise God. So, praise God, that ends our, our talk on um, fasted blessings. Praise God remembers about the glory. Hallelujah, it's all about the glory and the glory rising on earth and the glory rising in you. This fast is a personal fast that we're going on. Won't you join us the whole month of October, okay, to uh, join us in this uh, fast as we seek God, as we seek him for his presence, as we seek him for his anointing, as we seek him for his glory, for ourselves first and then for our families and our bloodline, okay? So God bless you so much and thank you so much for joining us. And let your friends know. Share uh, this video. It's going to be on YouTube as well, as well as on Facebook. Why don't you share it uh, with some friends and let them hear, you know, what God is doing and what God is going to be doing through this fast, okay, for you personally. And encourage not only yourself, but encourage some of the people that you know to join us in this fast. This is a God-directed fast that he has sanctified for the month of October, before our feasting of Thanksgiving and before our rejoicing at Christmas time, we're going into a modified Daniel's fast to seek him so that our lives will line up with what his word is saying and what he's doing on earth today. God bless you real good. And so until tomorrow morning, I won't be on as long tomorrow morning, I'm just going to go over some prayers with you, uh, give you a list of vegetables that you can buy and stuff that you can have in your house that will help you uh, already be prepared uh, for when we start the fast, hallelujah, and say a prayer, hallelujah, have you pray with me and I'll pray with you and uh, we'll be sharing and then Saturday morning starts our time of rejoicing and our time of glorifying God through humbling ourselves before him and seeking his face that he might hear from heaven and heal our land, hallelujah, God bless you and until Saturday, until tomorrow morning, we will uh, see you. I'm Prophetina with Jericho Way Ministries. God bless you.